wow, I'm taking out real estate in LeBron James' yeah, head. Like, that's a weird. guy who's going to be, like, he's one of the most famous people in the world. How does that make you feel? They don't acknowledge me. I've been around, I've been around them a couple, few times. Um, I, I, either my hand was ignored when I held it out for a handshake or- No way! Just, yeah, my, more my presence was just not even acknowledged, even though there were three people standing there. <laughs> like, I, I'm telling you, it is, it, it's like when you, like, did I have a relationship with you that I don't remember? Like, yeah. that's what it feels like. Like, did we break up badly? I don't, I don't know. I don't know you. I've never spoken with you. Do you like, know what you did? Like, sometimes no. I don't know what I did and I did something stupid and I got drunk <laughs> or whatever. I, right? Like, that's what it feels like. It feels like, did I hook your wife up with somebody? Like, I don't know. It's what, it feels personal and I didn't. I don't know them. Hey guys, welcome on Into Drinks with Banks. I'm Julie Stewart Banks. And if you've seen this show before, you know that I've had many of my friends on in sports, entertainment, and media because humble brag, I have so many friends. Jokes, I just DM and harass people to come on because it's my job. But one person I've literally wanted to have on the show since day one, since two and a half years ago, since before Football Sports Network was even a real thing, is a woman that I met when I moved to New York City and we both worked for different jobs at the time and we no longer have those jobs for the better. And now 800 days later, after her last job, she is back from the dead and she's coming for you, jokes. She is not, maybe, uh, but she's back and she is ready to chat, have a little fun drinking and thinking. Uh, she's gonna kill me for even just having that weird voice, but um, needs no introduction, legendary sports broadcaster, Michelle Beadle, how the f have you been, yes! buddy? I haven't seen you in ages. Finally! Oh my God! Let's just. Mm-hmm. 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 Mm-h
pick up and move back to Texas. That's something I swear to you in a billion years, I never would have thought I would do ever. Like when I left here, I left here and was like, yeah. I like to go home and visit every once in a while, but it's just not for me. And here I am. And it just, it's all these things that sort of just clicked and made sense in that moment. And I've just been like happy, like just content, wow. which is a very weird it's a weird state of what being. Is the secret? <laughs> what drugs are you know. on? I don't my know. Friend? I know. Oh well, they're all all the doses have gone up. But yeah, yeah. that's yeah. that's not my fault. <laughs> yeah. Crazy. So what was it like then going deciding to go back to San Antonio? Like you were in LA. Yeah. Since after you moved from New York, you were there, yeah. and then you're like, what move? What moved you back? It's crazy. I got kind of addicted to this. Like I liked to buy a new home, move in, sell it do it again. So that's like, that was my thing. It was almost like my weird hobby. So it's an oddly time consuming hobby, but nonetheless, <laughs> it, that market was good enough. And so I did that. I bought, I sold a house, bought another one, had moved in, but not really moved in. And then my oldest dog died. And when he died, oh, I just yeah, sort of was like, Leroy. yeah, he, it was, uh, I, I just, I spent a few more days in LA. I had friends that were awesome and like basically were always around me. And then I just realized I don't have to be here anymore. I don't work here anymore. Mm -hmm. I, I do have friends here, my brothers, but I also, I just need to go somewhere else. And I got in the car and threw the other pugs in the car and I drove to Texas to see my family. It was around Christmas. And then the next thing you know, February comes around. I'm like, what am I doing? Like, why am I, I, I hadn't even thought about going back. That was sort of my first clue. I had not even like that, that house is sitting there with um, unpacked boxes in the garage. And I just was like, I don't want to go back, put it on the market, found this one, boom, done. So then now that you're there in, in San Antonio and you're in Texas and you've got essentially like a new life, like yeah. how is your perspective different or maybe it isn't, but how did the last time off and your whole life before that influence, like where you are right now? I think I, I had assumed I would have a much um, more fragile ego I think that's the one thing I thought. I, I thought, oh my God, you know, my first job out, it has to be like, you know, you can't go from doing the NBA finals to like just whatever was what I thought. I thought that for probably a good 18 months. And as it got closer and closer to the time when I was thinking, okay, maybe I should do something. I realized I don't actually care. Um, the only thing that that made sense was if I cared what everyone else thought and I didn't. And so it was just like, I want to do what makes me happy. And the, you know, the Spurs are here and so many of the people that I was an intern under or with are still there doing what they do. And so for me, it was just, it was the most warm. It was like a little cocoon. Like I was being welcomed back into like a safe space. And right. for that to sort of be my first thing out was just, it was great. Like, I don't feel like people here they don't give a damn. Like, honestly, like they don't care what you did before. They're proud. Like, you know, and, and that's a nice thing to hear, but it's not, my worth isn't on what I'm doing right now. It's everyone's just happy to be around everybody. And that's, I think something that a lot of us have to miss because we choose a lot of career things over everything else. And that's just the, that's the nature of the beast, unfortunately, but it can be better. It's just, it's sometimes it's hard at certain levels to have that sort of warm feeling. Unfortunately, sounds like you've you have such great like introspection and like depth on your perspective of like life and how we deal with the career where, as you mentioned, the rat race, like there's so much competition <laughs> amongst everyone and you're like at peace. It feels like. Yeah, Pete, that's a good one. Pete, look, and I keep waiting. I keep thinking, OK, am I going to wake up tomorrow and be back to that version of myself that was like, I'm going to stab everybody in the face if they get in my way and I'm going to do this job and that's, I'm not stopping till I get it. And like, I don't, I, I keep thinking, you know, like, is that happening? Is that going to come back? I, so far, so good. <laughs> it hasn't come back yet. I She'll wake be up back. Like, don't worry. <laughs> Always is. Like, it's like, I don't know. Am I going to get, it's weird. It's like, I've, yeah, I'm like a 90 year old person in my mind right now. It's bizarre. <laughs> When you're with the Spurs, you are, you're back there. As you mentioned, everyone is always looking like, what's the next thing? Like, what's the next right. big thing? And like the Instagram people have like, <laughs> I have an announcement and da, 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 da. It's like, you're just trying to like, um, we're literally just trying to make everyone else feel like shit because we feel like shit. Right. So, um, <laughs> Instagram like, what is it? It's the worst. <laughs> like, that's not me, by the way, everybody. Um, <laughs> uh, but what what is it like then going to Bally's and going to like a place where, as you mentioned, like it's not ESPN, like it's no. not NBA Countdown, it's not Get Up, it's a regional broadcast for the team you love. 
Yeah, and that's it. And it's just, it feels like, you know, I do like one game a week, basically. And my job is to mess with Sean Elliott and just, you know, I call like the second quarter. Or I think coming up, I'll probably call like a whole game. And when I say call, I mean, I just sit there and make one-liners uh, in the middle of everyone's serious calling of a game. <laughs> and, and it's just, it's like, but I never really... I, you probably can relate to this too, because I feel like this is how TV works. Like when you're doing TV, you have no idea who's watching. So there could be a million people on the other side watching, or there could be seven people on the other side watching. It, it doesn't change sort of how you do it or your energy or anything like that. At least it shouldn't, I don't think. Yeah. And so I don't ever, I don't ever think about it like that. Like it's just, it's still, it's just another job. This one happens to be very stress-free and there's no drama behind the scenes and that, that makes it all just very like I like going I like driving into this in the arena and just seeing everybody it's, it's it's like 20 years have passed but it doesn't always feel like 20 years have passed which is weird wow that's I mean that's so exciting to go that'd be like if I went to like the OHL I guess and right? made no money again and right um, <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah that's why I tell them save your money the first time around yeah you're like uh yeah. <laughs> Hey, uh, we all know your seller is public. Um, I hope you put that one in the bank. <laughs> oh, totally. Oh, God. Yeah. yeah no, but, um, okay, so, but, but I want to know, like, that, was that the job that got you back? Like, was the catalyst of going out, coming out of retirement or? Yeah, sorry, I mean, about... I was just sort of like, I, no, I call it, I call it semi-retirement. Like, I still do. I'm like, where were you? Oh, I was retired. Um, yeah, it kind of was. Like, it was, a. Uh... I mean, the joke with my friends is like, I have to go to work, you guys, one day a week. So like, you need to give me my respect and everything else that comes with that. Because I went from doing nothing. Like I had, you know, there was nothing in my calendar other than like appointments every once in a while or a yoga class or something like that. And so to have a place to go to actually somebody's expecting you to be there, that's mm -hmm. nice. And then the athletic came along and that offer was awesome. And I thought it would be kind of a cool, something I've never done, obviously. I love um, it. Yeah, it's bizarre. It's, I still don't really get it. I mean, truth be told, like, I literally just get up, I put my pajama pants on, I walk in here, I turn these lights on, and then I'm like, this is a job? Like, you've no. been doing this. Like, you know what you're doing. Like, I, I, oh, that's the but thing. Honey, like, this is our second <laughs> Christmas from home. I know. <laughs> I know. That part. By the way. Oh, my God. But, yeah. It's your back, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Christmas from home. We're not crazy over here. Um, <laughs> I my boyfriend is that. literally locked in the bedroom right away because we have a bedroom now because we've upgraded. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> yeah. Stay in there. Do not come out. Um, oh, that's crazy. But, uh, but just before we move on, one, one quick question is just, like, when you were off, did yeah. you ever think, like, I'm done with yes. broadcasting. Yeah, totally. I did. The only thing that sort of was the, the sliver of mm, was I just didn't know what else I wanted to do. And so had I had like some amazing backup plan, like my backup plan is to win this stupid lotto, move to the UK, buy a bed and breakfast and live out everybody's rom-com fantasies. Like that's the whole, my best are friends are going to go. Are you gal? Yeah. I, like, oh, I play scratchers a lot. Oh uh, man, and, like, <laughs> that is a deep, dark hole. Boy, the it guy is. locked in the bedroom right now is a big lotto guy as well. It's the that's best. That's like, that's like playing the whatever horse yeah. racing and it's all 50, that 50 50 julie i mean oh, yeah. 50, 50, 50, I'm not. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so i keep thinking okay when that happens other than that i had really didn't have a backup plan and i figured well this is something i know how to do eventually i'll probably have to do it again but until i have to do it again or i want to do it again i'm just gonna chill Right, until the buyout runs out. And right, runs exactly. Out. Until I was like, uh, we didn't invest any of that money? Oh, I, I spent it all on knitting yarn? Oh, well, then that's a problem. I brought, I brought yeah. to get back to work. <laughs> and that too, I was like, Damn oh, it. we got one more week where I can still live without a job. Then I got to get one. Uh, okay, that's so serious. but you got, you got a job with, um, with, with Spurs. And right now it's like crazy with COVID. Um, yes. And so many Jeez. games being postponed. Like, what is it like being a broadcaster right now when you're like, like, have, has, have they told you guys anything? Is there, like, a plan B or what's what's the, hour, like, hour by hour almost for you guys? So with the Spurs, they've been um, they've been very much on the cautious side of things. Like, the arena is a very much a mask arena. Um, the broadcast doesn't – they don't travel. They may start traveling in February, but the way things seem to be trending right now, that's, that's very much up in the air anyways. But, yeah, so they, when the guys are on the road, they call games from the arena in this, like, bizarro world – pod center that's not even in the arena it's like near wow. the production yeah it's like this crazy setup and i think for the broadcast side of things that doesn't seem to be changing anytime soon now the sports world like yeah it seems like every hour i go check on twitter and it's these people have all tested yeah i just 
It just seems like an endless loop that we're probably never going to get out of. We just have to figure out how to manage. And so that's, that it's kind of a bummer. Like you just said, like your second Christmas and that's, I, I never would have thought this would take this long. I mean, no one did. I mean, when you watch television shows that were filmed during the time and they refer to it as like, oh, it'll be over in a couple of weeks. And they really I thought know. that back then. It's crazy to remember that. And here we are. I got to say, you talked about it recently, but how LeBron, you mentioned that he, he, he didn't want you on ESPN, which I yeah. have to say is some of the, that's the coolest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> like if LeBron didn't want me on drinks of things, I would frame every it's weird. picture of LeBron saying thing like, wow, I'm taking out real estate in LeBron James' yeah. head. Like that's a guy who's going to be, like, he's one of the most famous people in the world. How does that make you feel? Yeah, he's got a hell of a lot of power. I mean, it just made me feel kind of sad. Like, why Why does it even matter? Or why, is, why do you want to have your input on a job that you don't have any? It's just, it was such a, it was weird. But it was also going on in the middle of like such like garbage people doing garbage things that it was just, it was just almost like the day that I was told about it was just like another like, yeah, that, that makes sense. <laughs> That's where we are right now. I totally get it. And, you know, whatever. He didn't get his way. No one got their actual way when it was all said and done, which is kind of the ultimate humor in the entire situation. Yeah. But, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I will never know. And that's... That's fine. You don't um, want to know, like his team hasn't reached out or no one. They won't said, even. Like, they don't acknowledge me. I've been around. I've been around them a couple of few times. Um, I, I, either my hand was ignored when I held it out for a handshake, or no way. Just yeah, my more my presence was just not even acknowledged, even though there were three people standing there. <laughs> like I, I'm telling you, it is. It, it's like when you like, did I have a relationship with you that I don't remember? Like yeah. that's what it feels like. Like did we break up badly? I don't. I don't know. I don't know you. I've never spoken with you. Do you like, know what you did? Like no. sometimes I don't know what I did, and I did something stupid, and I got drunk <laughs> or whatever. I, right? Like that's what it feels like. It feels like. Did I hook your wife up with somebody? Like, I don't know. It's what, it feels personal, and I didn't. I don't know them. And so, yeah, it's that's why I sort of stopped. I was just like, this is funny. This has been a funny little chapter of life. Uh, it is what it is. And, you know, he's one of the most powerful, powerful humans in Hollywood at the moment, which is kind yeah. of crazy as well. But, yeah, who knew? I mean, at least I'm, I, I don't think he has any pull at the Spurs. So I, I think I'm okay, at least for a while. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Well, I mean, I think that what you could do is you two could then reunite at some point, yeah. and then that will be a huge podcast. Like a, reunite? A, a like, made you got to unite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, made for TV you? special, like oh. LeBron and Michelle Beadle. Sit down. Oh, That's there we go. You're sit down with, Le, with Le, LeBron. You guys sponsored by, you know, Ooh, it Whoever. could be sponsored by something that has... By like Carrillo. There you go. Your yeah, drink. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there we go. Boom. Yeah, we'd have to be drunk to do that, I think. Man, that'd be awesome. Okay, uh, before we get on, I just want one more thing. Like, you you were there, and we have, we've had a lot of ESPNers on the show. Like, ESPNers, oh, sure. but more former ESPNers, because they're way cooler Freedom. at this point than... <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, no offense to anyone else. But, um, no. you know, it was NBA Countdown. It's like, Sage was there, and then you're there, and then... Uh, Rachel and Maria and like the whole thing so, from the outside um, felt feels very like intense like it's like it doesn't feel like the greatest most supportive work environment right right what was that like living all that while I was doing it and while we were all sort of this insular you know we had such a great crew behind and in front of the camera like it was fun so we always just sort of felt like our own little pod of humans um, the, the, the bullshit that was going on behind the scenes, I think I stayed out of it for the most part. It wasn't probably until the last playoff run that it was just like, it just became loud and, uh, it, it just stepped over way too many lines. Like it, it went from being sort of an internal drama thing where you're just like, fine, you can ignore that to the outside world was now being dragged in and like mm -hmm. media outlets were being used and it was just like it wasn't, it's not a good look. It's not a good look for anybody. It's not a good look for those of us involved. It's not a good look for the company itself. It's, you know, you have women that are just constantly publicly having to pit themselves against each other and no one does a damn thing to stop that when they know what's yeah. going on. And it's, it's just not a good look. And I don't know if maybe that was part of it. Like, I don't know if at the end of the day, it was always to get Greeny and Stephen A. Smith to be the faces of it. Maybe, I don't know, but it's just, knows? it's a bummer because it's a, it's a high profile job. The only other one like that's at TNT and it crushes everybody's face. And so you would think that stability and some sort of 
chemistry would be the goal and it was never ever that's never been a priority seemingly so it is wow isn't mm. that wild maybe it, this was all just a conspiracy theory to just get greeny and Stephen a at the time <laughs> that was always the plan conspiracy theory is much of a plan that is known outwardly by everyone right? like it's involved. literally like the most transparent plan ever <laughs> oh god well i'm i'm sorry and i'm also happy though that you're in a better place you oh, didn't yeah. die you're no. in a better no. job you, right like we stuck it to him at the end got what we needed effed everybody off and then we moved on with our lives <laughs> it's I like know, the good ending. it's a good ending it's a good breakup it is it is and i feel as though right now it's like it's not necessarily even i'm saying this i would never work at espn because no one would ever hire me after <laughs> i mean look at all this shit like, are you kidding well no you trust me you're in a better you think you think they'd hire drinks with banks you're, you're in a better i spot. mean i worked there for a year but like they would never hire this back they'd be like well because now it's oh too you fun. can't you can't have alcohol on camera remember when you couldn't have alcohol in a in a picture oh yeah i remember you couldn't even say the word gamble and now it's like that's just that's what we do now. You couldn't I, say that's, gamble, yeah. You couldn't talk about bets. You couldn't talk about over under. You couldn't talk about anything, and that's how much like the whole. I mean, really, the whole industry has moved forward. Uh, it's kind of insane to me. I guess it's like that. It is, and then now it's like now it's legal, and now there's so much money. It's like, hey, oh God. You, make sure you put money on this game. Oh, we right? work in sports books, so I can't say anything bad about that. <laughs> make sure yeah, got, you guys so put much. money on this game. <laughs> I have so much to learn too, because I'm like, yo, we get one of those Pat McAfee deals, like. Oh Boom. yeah, that's it. <laughs> Dude, you're you are going to get a Pat McAfee deal. No, like, that you, is I, that show's fun. I will say this: like, he, not every good. show that gets that kind of deal, you're like, really? Like, that's a fun show. I'm no, happy. Pat for is great. Them. Yeah, he's and one. it also helps everyone else, just like your deal helped all of us. Like, it feels like he's in the future, shit. hopefully. Shit, or it went backwards. Who knows? <laughs> Subscribe on YouTube and follow us on all social media at Fubo Sports. Well, we have had an awesome time drinking and binking here Ooh. with Michelle Beadle. Oh, and is that Michelle... alcoholic eggnog? Is that? Yes, it is, of course. Right? Okay, like once I, I knew you were going to have some alcohol in yours, I was like, I'll put some in. <laughs> because a lot of my guests don't drink alcohol recently. It's really oh, it's COVID quite or... tragic. At all? No, they're worried that they're going to say something stupid or it's 9 a.m., you know, one of those. It's not like I... <laughs> I didn't drink 30 of these before I came on. Good Lord. I could have. I, I know. You, you wouldn't have known. Did I? Did I not? I don't know. Um, okay. But where can we, you've got mm. so much going on. Where can we find you next? May leave this room today. May not. There's a big news story of the day. I, yeah. Podcast. I apparently, and this, I just, wherever you find your podcast is where you, got, you can go hear mine. It's what did I miss? Obviously a lot and still missing more. And yeah, that's it. I think it's three times Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I know it's a lot. I've already talked to the agents about this. We're on it. <laughs> so, like, it it's good though, it because it's not too long and it's also like great banter. Well, I'm learning. Like... I'm, I'm learning that. Cause at first I, I was like, how do you feel 30? And next thing you know, like 45 minutes have gone by and I didn't. So it's a, it's a learning curve for me, for sure. Well, this has been awesome, Michelle. I would have loved to keep chatting, but uh, um, we must say goodbye here. And this is our cheers to you. It's good to cheerios. see you again. Hope to see you back in New York yes. for maybe some karaoke and a bevy or two. Oh, my God, I do miss or that. definitely yes. karaoke, because remember you doing that. Um, and also, guys, make sure you check out our social um, at Fubo Sports on Twitter, Instagram, and all of our episodes on YouTube, including other former disgruntled ESPN employees. <laughs> Michelle's not disgruntled, but we have plenty. Uh, and until next time, bottoms up, bitches. Woohoo!